Round two, ablation, catheter. Going in for my second round. Got this really cool hairnet. It's free, complimentary, with the surgery. Think about it. Can't wait to do it again. Hi, this is a video uh, about catheter ablation. I just did my second catheter ablation uh, for atrial fib, uh, atrial fibrillation. Uh, had my first one done four years ago and had a video up on it actually. And it came back recently and I had good insurance so I got it fixed again. And I just want to put this video out there so people who've had it done, who might be having it done again or who are thinking of getting it done because they're having arrhythmias, I just want you to have this resource because I think they're valuable. Um, I just had my second one done on Tuesday, it's Friday, still have a little bandage, it could probably come off soon. Um, basically the entry points when they put the catheters in are through your, through your neck and then your, both your femoral arteries and your groin. And um, <clears throat> this last time they did quite a number on my, uh, you know, areas that were problems after they uh, got the arrhythmia going and induced it. I had a couple problem spots and they really did a number on it. So, you know, after the surgery, what I had from my experience was I had quite a bit of pressure in my chest um, following the post-op. It's gone down significantly since then. Uh, but I know the first night, and this might freak people out, that's why I wanted to share this, is there just was a lot of pressure. You know, they went in there and did a lot of scarring, and, you know, there's going to be inflammation, there's going to be swelling after that. So don't freak out. It's okay to go to sleep. I'd maybe sleep a little bit elevated. If not, no big deal, whatever's comfortable. Um, but yeah, you'll have quite a bit of pressure. Maybe you won't. Some people don't, but I did. And, you know, it's gone down significantly each day since then. I'm feeling pretty good today. Still don't want to strain. Uh, still taking it pretty easy. Just walking. No lifting. I try not to bend over too much. The first couple of days, taking a deep breath was tough. Um... Yeah, and now I'm just on blood thinners, I'm on Pradaxa uh, with flecainide and um, Cochison for the inflammation around the heart, I believe. And I took a little bit of Advil the first few days just because it was pretty intense the first the day after. It's gone down quite a bit since then. Um, but yeah, so a little bit about me. I had this done almost four years ago. I have a month shy. And I was an athlete and I was having issues, you know, uh, mine were after drinking though, you know, they say a lot of athletes can get this and, you know, I'd grown up doing all sorts of different sports from soccer to martial arts to football uh, and playing football as a punter for a while. And my first episode happened after a night of going out and ripping it and living in Canada at the time and I woke up the next morning and I had a really bad arrhythmia and at the time I was rehabbing I had a torn up shoulder so I had too much time on my hands and was just not using it wisely but um, I had a pretty intense arrhythmia I checked myself into the ER they gave me a IV drip just a standard IV a saline bag I believe and it kicked back into sinus rhythm after a short period of time and then I had, you know, a couple other instances where since then, over the years, I had a couple episodes of AFib that would kick in, mostly due to partying and drinking specifically, over drinking. Alcohol is definitely a trigger for me. If I have a glass of wine, I my heart skips a beat almost instantly. It's crazy. Uh, so if you're out there and you're having problems and you drink, might be time to give it up. I know I'm thinking about it. I'm pretty sure I'm done. You know, I, there's no real need for it, to, for me to be having any drinks anymore. The second time getting the ablation done, it's just, you know, I like to give myself a clean slate, but let me get back to this. So anyways, I, <clears throat> I kept having more episodes and then finally, uh, 2009 was my first one, 2011 was my last significant one that I went to the ER for, 
and I probably had three or four ER visits for AFib, and I've been lucky they clicked in with, you know, the IV bag, and um, and then they last time the IV bag didn't work, so they went to cardio vert me, and you know, the doctor was all too happy to do. He said, "Yeah, yeah, we'll just you know, just cardio vert, no big deal." <laughs> so, like, what does that mean? You know, just just like it's just that easy. You're just gonna give me the juice, but. So they patch me up, they put a couple pads on you, one in the front, one in the back, and then they put you on a light sedative for cardioversion, and then they'll, you don't really remember it. I vaguely remember when the electricity hit, it lifts you off the table. But that didn't work. I got hit three times at the max voltage, it didn't work. I just left, pissed off, still an AFib, went home, went to bed, woke up in sinus rhythm. And so at that point I just was over it. I it was just tired of dealing with it. It was becoming a nuisance, and I just I had good insurance at the time from playing football, and I just knew I had to take care of it. So I went to a UCLA arrhythmia center. Uh, at the time, I was seeing Dr. Shivkumar and Dr. Vasegi, who is my doctor now. She is my gatekeeper of all things arrhythmia. And I went in, met with them. They explained to me the effects of alcohol on arrhythmias. And there's some crazy scientific term for what happens when you drink alcohol and what it does to your veins and how it can create a arrhythmia you know a very uh, I'm losing the words right now just a very arrhythmia rich environment and <clears throat> so anyways I was still not really listening to lifestyle you know choices at the time I've always drank a lot of coffee too. Not, be, not really an energy drink guy, but I've always drank a lot of coffee. I've always exercised intensely, ate really healthy, but exercised intensely, and then drinking and coffee were probably my vice. Drinking only like on the weekends though, more of a binge kind of guy. And uh, got the first procedure done, 2011, March, and had some success for a while, but moved to Vegas, was a bartender, not the best decision lifestyle-wise for trying to get over an arrhythmia, I know, and got comfortable. I got kind of comfortable thinking it was just going to be gone, and there's really only a 66%, like two-thirds percentage uh, chance of it, you know, working the first time around, and if you have the ablation done again, like I did, of that percentage, there's another two-thirds percentage that works. And <clears throat> I got kind of comfortable, I fell into some old bad habits. I was working a lot, was high stress, wasn't sleeping a lot, and you know, fell into the thing of drinking two bottles of red wine at night after a long work day. You know, you, you think I was Italian with all the espresso and red wine I drank. But <clears throat> started having some more episodes in the last year or so, like 2013, up to. Uh, 2014 probably up till recently where I wasn't drinking wasn't doing anything just have a little bit of coffee and but I'd work out and at night at night I would just have like you know these horrible misbeats and if obviously you've had them so you're here it's like somebody's grabbing your leg every time you try to take a step you know I can feel my heart and when it's out of rhythm I can feel it when it's in sinus rhythm I can tell and there's nothing worse than having Especially if you get up there far enough to where you're having several hundred a day, you know, or, or how many, however, you know, and it's in your subconscious and you're sitting there trying to go through your day and you're, you're, you're constantly having a misbeat and it sucks. It's, okay, I was just interrupted by a phone call. Sorry about that. But it's the fucking worst, man. You're sitting there and you're trying to go through your day and <clears throat> you get all these misbeats and those cause anxiety over time they they just it's like compounding interest it's horrible um second phone call in a row <clears throat> so anyhow you get those beats it's just a hitch in your giddy up it sucks those cause anxiety <clears throat> and they just build up over time it's like that Edgar Allan Poe story where the the heart's beating underneath the you know underneath the floorboards. <laughs> it's just it's so friggin' ominous. And 
it shakes you a little bit, you know, even, even if you have a pretty good, you know, sense of self and you're not overly paranoid after time, it can shake you. So if you're here, you're obviously thinking about it. And my thing is if you're thinking about getting it done and you're having more and more episodes, there's no medication. It's probably going to help you. I mean, you definitely, one thing I'm going to look at for myself personally is lifestyle choices. I'm going to look at my caffeine intake. If I have to cut out coffee, maybe I need to go on more of an alkaline diet. I'm going to really research it and I'll post whatever I find, obviously on my channel. Um, it might take me a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to look at all the you know naturopathic ways of healing the body that I can to make sure I don't have this issue anymore. Because that, that's one thing I want to make sure that doesn't happen again is that it's from my lifestyle decisions. So... Um, but yeah, so the flecainide was an option to take, but after, to help control the arrhythmia, but after, uh, you know, a year, it's only 30% effective, I believe, and it can cause dizziness once you up the dosage. Who wants to walk around dizzy on pills? That's no way to go about life. So if you're thinking about getting it done, just do it. You know, I, I talked to a girlfriend of mine. She had a much more dangerous, I think it was SVTs that she had, and she had, like, passed out once and I just told her hey get it done she was having thousands a day and I think she's having a ton of success with it right now so just find a good doctor that you trust that can explain it to you you know hopefully you have good good insurance and just go get it done you're gonna go in for the procedure um, basically what you can expect is you'll go in the morning and they'll set up your IV and that might be the worst of it then they'll hit you with some meds You'll talk for two seconds, like you're going to talk for 10 minutes, and you'll be out. And then the next thing you know, you're going to wake up in recovery. If you're smart like me and you're a guy, you tell the <laughs> you tell the nurse to take your catheter, the one catheter that I don't want to think about, the one that goes in the groin, not the ones that they go in to snake your heart with, uh, to have them take that out before you wake up. Just a thought. And, you know, then it's just recovery. I mean, you might have some pressure in your chest. Um, yeah, there are some small percentages of things happening. There always is for any surgery. Um, you're going to be on blood thinners for three months afterwards while you're healing. You may have some arrhythmia after the surgery just while you're healing. Um, that's normal until it's completely healed up. I think that can be from three to six months until you really can tell if the surgery worked. Um, but my doctor gave me some flecainide to help control those extra beats um, from the scarring while it's healing. And that's about it. You stay the night. I think the worst part for me is I, I don't do well with anesthesia. So I was a little woozy, trying not to puke this time. The first time I puked really bad and blew my femoral patches open. So that caused a little panic. But um, yeah, you basically, you know, spend the night in the hospital and you eat some jello and, you know, you get out in the morning. Anyways, if you have any questions, uh, please leave a, a comment below. I try to check this page. It might take me a little bit of time to get back to you, but just leave any questions, any comments um, about what you have, any questions. I'd love to answer and, and you know help you out any way that I can. That's why I posted this video. So good luck with everything. I hope you get back to sinus rhythm and uh, you know, living life worry-free, okay? Thank you.